morning, Cornerstone. Good morning. So good to see everybody here. Uh, if you're new to Cornerstone, we would love for you guys to step back to the Welcome Center and pick up a packet, learn a little bit more about our church and what we believe, what we, uh, the classes that we have to offer, the children's ministries that we have to offer, and also some ways that you may be able to help out. Uh, in Galatians chapter 3, it tells us that through faith, we are all children of God. That we are all one body and one family. We worship as one family this morning. And this time of worship, it's essential for our life. It's a time when we can come before God and we can cast off the worries of this world. We can let go of the anxieties of life. And we can renew our trust and our faith and God's strength to bring us through the, the trials that we face. As we worship this morning as a local church, know that there will be a time and a day that we will worship as a global church family as well. In Romans chapter 7, Romans, in Revelation chapter 7, it says that after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Worship this morning. Worship today. Worship every day like you're standing before that throne and that God is in your midst. Because he is. He's here with us this morning. He lives in the hearts of every believer. So let's let ourselves be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's let ourselves worship like today is the last day we will. Let's pray, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for just a, another wonderful day of life. And Father, we thank you for, for the blessings of being able to come here. Lord, we live in a country where we don't have to worry about persecution to come here and give you worship and praise that you deserve. Father, we also give you thanks for those that live in lands far away where Father, they do face uh, just the loss of life or, or just being chastised by their community for just professing their love and faith in you. Father, we thank you that there will come a day that, that we will worship as a united church family. Father, in your presence and in the presence of all the saints and in the presence of Jesus, Father, we thank you so much that we have that to look forward to. Father, we ask you to be with us now as we Go into our service. Father, we pray for your spirit to wash over the, the people here this morning. Father, that they feel you moving in their lives and that they just let you shine through in their life to the community around them. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church, great to see you this morning. Let's stand together as we come before God.
with Jesus. As long as we trust in the Lord, we can partake of his love and his mercy forever. Even in our darkest moments, when all hope seems lost, we must remember that his mercy endures forever. Oh, I 
It's great to see you guys this morning. Uh, it's wonderful to be here, just being able to celebrate God's love and to celebrate with you as a church family. It's really and truly a blessing. I, you know, I have to say that Sunday mornings, being able to worship with a, an entire group of people is kind of a happy place, a happy time for me. I was looking online this week, and I know a lot of you are finishing your summer trips to your happy place. I saw somebody post that this week, my happy place, toes stuck in the sand, sitting in the sun. How many of you, that would be your happy place? I see some hands going up, yeah. Other people, maybe you're looking forward to the fall, uh, cooler weather. Your happy place is snuggled up in a blanket next to a fire. How many of you all, your happy place is in a tree stand? Yeah, I see some hands. Yeah, I know some people like that. That's a pretty good place. You know, for some of you, that, that's exactly what you want. Some of you, though, it's, it's a boat with a rod or maybe a book in hand. Uh, one of my happy places is a cruise ship. It's not a little boat. I want the big ship where people bring me food and take care of me all the time. Because that, that's, I didn't realize what a happy place that was until they canceled my cruise during COVID, and I was mad for like a year. Uh, <laughs> it was it's like, I like that. And then last year, a hurricane took out a day of it, and I'm still upset. Uh, I can't wait to go back on another trip because it's just, it's a happy place to be able to have everything taken care of. But, now, but how many of you have found that you've also got a happy place in the arms of somebody that you love? Okay, isn't that great? I tell you, uh, Kaylee's at that age now, and she's starting to throw those hugs, and I, when I pick her up, and those little arms go around your neck. That, that's, that's, uh, that's as close to heaven as I'm going to get this side of, uh, of eternity, I guess, because it is, it is a great feeling to be snuggled like that, and I haven't gotten that in 20 years since my daughter's got a little bit too big for it, you know, I, I just love it. Um, but you know, that's what Psalm 84 is really talking about. That's what we're going to look at this week, is that the psalmist writes about their happy place, a place that makes you feel safe, relaxed, secure, you're worry-free, happy, hopeful, and there is no better or greater happy place that you can ever find and simply in the presence of God. You know, that's where, that's really where, the only place you're going to find true, uh, to be a truly lasting, happy place. We just sang the words of that song. And it just, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the course of the Lord. For my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. You know, the courts of the Lord, his dwelling place, are about being in God's presence. When I think about being in God's presence, it really makes me think two different directions. One is towards heaven, and one day being in God's presence, the unrestrained glory of God surrounding us, joining with the angels around his throne and just praising God. I, I think about that song from several years ago, I Can Only Imagine. I, you know, will, you stand, will I stand in your presence or... To my knees will I fall. Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I, I, I can't really imagine. I don't know what it will be like, but I get excited to think about it. Just, just the thought, just to be able to experience being in God's presence with nothing else. I think the awe and the anticipation is just kind of overwhelming can be. I remember watching the Polar Express with my girls when they were little, and there's a scene towards the end when they're at the North Pole, and all the elves are out, and they're singing so this song, and, and they're all, there's so much chatter, so much exuberance. The kids are there. They're singing, talking. And it's almost chaotic because there's so much energy building up to when Santa's going to walk out. And I know it's just a cartoon, but that's what I anticipate. I, when I really think about getting to step into the throne room of God, I, I just, the, the exuberance starts to build. You know, I will stand in awe of his creation and all that he's made, but I don't think that has anything close to compare to what it's going to be like to see God in all of his glory. I uh, just, I get excited. I was like, like a kid on Christmas morning, I just too much excitement to really contain. And, and if, I, if I keep going on, I'll start talking faster and faster and faster because it just builds up. The good part is there won't be anybody telling me to calm down whenever I'm standing at the gates of heaven ready to walk into it. I think everybody's going to be just like me, so excited to be able to go in, bursting with this joyful anticipation of what Revelation reveals of the glory of God, that his brilliance is so bright it just shines to the point that you don't even need the sun God alone is all that we need, and we're surrounding him. It's going to be awesome. I'm getting, getting goosebumps, God bumps right now, just thinking about it. You know, it's like that anticipation is, is great. Amen? Are you looking forward to it? Do you think about that? 
Oh, it's great. And so that's one direction that this psalm makes me think about being and dwelling in the courts of God, looking to heaven that's one day going to come. But, you know, I get a little picture of this every Sunday morning here. That's the other direction, is that I get a little picture of it here. And you may not notice this because you're out here, but every Sunday morning before we, we lead worship, the praise team actually gathers right here behind this little wall, and we pray together. But every time we step back there, we hear everybody in this room. We hear you talking. We hear you laughing. We hear the joy. And I'm sitting there sometimes on Sunday morning, and that is, that is probably one of the most encouraging moments to me is when I just hear my church family loving being around each other. It's great. I, I enjoy it so much just to listen. And, we, you know, when we sing together, when your voices are joined proclaiming God's majesty, I love those moments because it's a glimpse of what it's going to be like in God's presence but your joy being together is also a reminder of just what Jesus said, that where two or more are gathered, there I am with them in their midst. It's, it's an encouragement. And that's what makes church worship gathering so great. I went to talk to Wanda Matherly this week, and, and she was saying, you know, I love going to church. I just want to be there. And if I'm not there, nothing else seems right all week long. Uh, there's a truth to that. Now, I mean, there, there's so much there that when we're with others worshiping God, if you don't get to experience that, do you find that your week feels a little off? I mean, I know some of you, you have to work every other week or something like that, and I, I just can't imagine not getting to experience it together that way. And I know you can, you can watch the message online, and you can see, you can get the teachings of it. We did that when we were on vacation. My whole family, we were gathered together, but we ate, each had our little phones watching it and we saw it we heard the songs we were in the same room together but it was not the same as being in this room with you and it's just something was missing and not being able to be around others is it, it just steals something of the joy of what it is to be in the family of god but being together in the house of the lord is just incredible there's a comfort and, and an encouragement that we get by meeting together that's what Hebrews tells us in chapter 10. If you go to verse 22, it, it encourages us there. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of the faith. And in verse 24, he goes on to say, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. That's part of what we're here together to do is to encourage each other on. And then in verse 25, he says, Don't give up meeting together as some people are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. And I'll tell you what, as the world gets a, seems to be getting a little bit worse, a little bit worse, I need this time together to be encouraged from you. And, and I hope that you understand that when you come in, that, that you're not just here to, to get something for the week, but that you understand that when you come in, if you give something to the people around you, if you share joy, friendship, love, encouragement, if you let God's Holy Spirit fill you up to the point that it flows over onto other people, that's when we truly get blessed. And so it's, it's what we bring so that we can give and we encourage each other. And that's what Psalm 84 reminds us, that in God's house, even the smallest and the most insignificant are welcome. It doesn't matter how good you feel about yourself or how insecure you may feel in life. You are welcome. The psalmist writes, he says, the sparrow has found his home, the swallow a nest near your altar. And blessed are those who dwell in your house. It reminds me of what Jesus said about the sparrow as well. In, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 through 31, he writes that, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. Even the hairs of your head are numbered. I know that doesn't take a whole lot of counting for some of you, but he's got them all. <laughs> And he knows about everything going on. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I really, truly, I will doubt. I really doubt whether my life is making a difference. And, and do you ever struggle with feeling like what you're doing actually matters? Like what, what difference are you making in the world around you? Are you really valued? I, I, I don't think I'm alone in that. And, and what I love from this psalm is that the answer to that is yes, you are valued by God and you have value to God's kingdom. And that's ultimately what matters. And sometimes the world won't see it, but God always sees you. 
He always sees you. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. You know, I love that old hymn. It's good to know, isn't it? Just no matter what you're going through, what you're experiencing, no matter how you feel about yourself, God sees you. I remember there was a time when Jesus went into someone's house and there was a woman who came in and poured oil on Jesus' feet and washed his feet with her hair. And the, the owner of the house says, don't, don't you realize that woman's a sinner? And, and, and Jesus looked at him and, and he had this key line. He says, do you see this woman? Do you see her? See, other people, you may feel like they're trying to judge you, but God isn't going to judge you. He sees you. And when you may feel like nobody else sees you, God sees you. It's good to know that God is watching. But even more than that, He protects us and He gives us strength. You see, Psalm 84 goes on to say that, Blessed are those whose strength is in you who have set their hearts on a pilgrimage. Now, a pilgrimage is, is simply a journey, and this psalm specifically was one that they would sing as they made that journey from wherever they were into Jerusalem to go to the temple to be able to praise and worship God. And they're, they're singing about his courts, how wonderful it is to be in those courts. But, but ultimately, our pilgrimage is to find the presence of God. And the real point of it is you're not going to find your comfort in this world. We don't need to look to this world to provide our comfort. We look to God. We walk with God. He's our strength. And we're not going to live for this world but for God's kingdom. That our citizenship isn't about where we live right now but where we're headed to. And when we understand that, then it changes our perspective on everything that we will encounter in life. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I know you all have all experienced those hard times. You've experienced the difficulties. You've gone through some, some great struggles in life. But God's with us, and he's watching over us. In Him, we have security that we can be happy even when life is hard because we realize that this world isn't our home. We're just passing through. The problems of this world are not our true reality. They are a temporary situation that we will overcome. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, for Jesus has overcome the world. You know, I used to think of salvation as something that I had to look forward to one day. It was something that, that was out there. One day I was going to get to heaven and then I'd be, then I was going to really understood what it was to be saved. Because, hey, if we're being saved from hell, I don't know about you, but this world doesn't really seem like paradise to me. There's, there's a lot of problems going on. And so I used to think sometimes, you know, that, that I, I can't wait to get to that. But I found over the last few years how short that thinking was. That when, when we talk about being saved, that we talk about having salvation, that it's not just for something someday off in the future where there's no problems, no worries, no concerns. You see, what I wanted was all the promised blessings of heaven, but I really wasn't thinking about the presence of God. And heaven, I want you to understand, heaven is not defined by God's presence. It's defined by His presence. And so salvation is not something far off. It's not something that I'm looking forward to someday. I've been guilty sometimes of dreaming about and desiring God's blessings without desiring God, though. And, and that's, that's when I think a lot of us aren't satisfied in life. I think there's a lot of people who are, are trying to live a Christian life, and to, but to be totally honest, they're thinking about heaven, but they would be completely happy if they got a worry-free, problem-free existence with physical blessings with no consideration of the presence of God. What they really want is God's gifts, not God's presence. And so they're waiting to be saved. But if you want salvation, it's here for you to have today. 
If you're waiting to be saved, then what's really going to happen is you're going to miss the joy of God's salvation today because salvation is God's gift of His presence with us every day, not just someday in the future. It's here today. Not just look forward to someday off in the future when we've made it through all the bad stuff that life throws at us. Dwelling in the presence of God is not just for heaven, but it's for today. Amen. God is with us. That was the beauty of his name, Emmanuel, God with us. He came to be with us, and we can truly walk in the fullness of our salvation where we don't need to worry. We don't have to be scared. We don't have to care about what other people think or what they say because if God is for us, who can stand against us? We have that presence in our life today, and when we cling to that, what more could you want? When you have the presence of God surrounding you today, then you don't have to worry about anything else. You can live in the joy of salvation now. Why fear death when it means you get to meet Jesus face to face? I went to a Friday night to a birthday party for a gentleman that I actually spent in my first weekend ministry 30 years ago. I helped him build a garage and worked with him all of one summer, and he was celebrating his 90th birthday Friday night. Um, and they were joking with him. They said, in 10 years, we'll get to do the 100th. And he looked at him and said, no, I've got better plans. I've got better places to be. And he pointed up. You know, he's, he's lived a good life, but he's ready, he's ready to see God. He knows he's got something better. And I know life can be hard, but if you're living in the presence of God, it's going to change your perspective. In verses 6 and 7 of Psalm 84 here, it says, They pass through the valley of Baca. They, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools, for they go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Now, that Valley of Baca, we don't really get that very well because what that really is is the Valley of Weeping or actually through the deep sorrows. And what the psalmist is declaring is that people living in the presence of God, they transform the deep sorrows of life into life-giving refreshment for others. And I want you to think about that for just a second. You see, when you practice living in the presence of God, then even though you are going through the deepest sorrows, the greatest difficulties, the worst struggles of life, you'll be able to go from strength to strength in God, but behind you, what you leave in the wake of that for all the people who are watching you go through those struggles is a time of refreshing to their soul. It gives confidence and encouragement. To them. Have you ever seen somebody going through what you can't imagine how difficult it would be. But they handle it with such grace and strength because they lean on the character and the power of God. Richie and Laura Chester did that for me this year. As they went through the loss of their baby Matt. I, I can't imagine how difficult that was but they handled it with such strength and grace that it encouraged and inspired. My wife's visiting some family and, and friends back in Virginia this weekend. One of the people that she's hoping to get to see just a little bit is the Carter family. Zach Carter's been battling bone cancer for over seven years. He's a young man who's had multiple amputations now and so many complications, and yet he smiles. He smiles. And he's still got problems right now, but they're talking to him that, you, that, that the family needs to write down just a book of the, of the Zachisms because he's always coming up with something that makes everybody around him smile. He handles it with grace and strength and refreshes the souls of the people who are there trying to encourage him. You know, there's a guy that I've watched on video sometime. Maybe you've seen him. His name is Nick Vuz. I can't really say it. I don't even know how to say it. I don't know how to say it or spell it. But, but anyway, he was born without arms or legs. Where we have two legs, he has one foot. He's a torso. And he's got the biggest smile. And he speaks about God's love. And he travels around the world. And he tells people about God's love. And, and he's married. Uh, he, he's, I mean, he's just a tremendous, inspiring individual who, who has touched so many lives from what I would think would be something I don't know how I would recover from, he, he has just left pools of refreshing in people's lives. I saw a video where they hit him in an over, 
were head compartment in an airplane and they got the stewardess come down to open it. I mean, he just makes jokes like that and, and everybody starts laughing. I mean, how do, you, how do you get mad at a torso? Uh, I mean, it's like, <laughs> because he just does it with this smile on his face and he makes people enjoy. I mean, I, look, I don't know about you, but most of you look like you walked in here. Don't you think you can handle a little bit of adversity with enough strength that it would encourage others? Uh, that's just so much that we can do. And when we live in the presence of God, we begin to do that. We can go through the deepest sorrows in a different way and, than what the rest of the world would see or even begin to imagine. And, and it's more than just this positive attitude or a stiff upper lip, but there's strength and confidence that comes into us because we dwell in the house of the Lord. Can I, can I give you just a small piece of advice here as I close out today? Quit trying to find comfort and contentment in this world. Because you aren't made to be part of this world. This world has been corrupted. God made you to experience His perfection. Our home is with God. And too many of us are trying to find our place in this world where we can be comfortable, where we can have a happy life or a happy place in this world. And I tell you what, if you find your happy place here, I feel sorry for you. Because you're going to miss what God has in store for you. Jesus even prayed for us in John 17, verse 16. He says that we are not of this world even as he is not of it. Paul declares our citizenship is in heaven. And peace and contentment isn't going to be found someplace in this world because it's only found in Christ. No place else will satisfy. For better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. The psalmist declares here, he says, I would rather be the doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. What he's basically saying is, I'd rather be stuck standing in the doorway just just holding on to the threshold of the door than to live in the middle of the best stuff of this world. Because none of it really matters. The old saying, it's better to be a pauper in heaven than a prince in hell, it kind of rings true. Thing is, there's no paupers in heaven. We're all princes of the king. God has something so great for us. I mean, just think about in your life what it could mean for you to have this encouragement of dwelling in the presence of God. You know, that's what the church family is here for, to share the, our lives with each other, to share in the burdens, to help each other through the difficulties, to, to love each other as Christ has loved us, and to do it in a very meaningful and powerful way. And that's what, that's what the church family is all about, to share our, our burdens, to rejoice with those who rejoice, to mourn with those who mourn. And true community, though, isn't going to happen just by showing up on Sunday morning. Walking through these doors on Sunday morning isn't going to truly give you the joy that is found in the community of the church as a part of God's family. I want to encourage you to take time to invest in other people sitting around you. Go out to eat lunch together. Go out and have a cup of coffee. Go play a game. Whatever. Just spend time getting to know each other and supporting each other. Before you leave today, we're going to have a simple step to encourage you and to encourage our church family to have stronger and better relationships. Um, and we'll talk about that before the service is out. But right now, we're going to have a time of communion. And communion is a time in which we also get to focus in on each other. You see, a lot of times we think about communion as just our time with God in which we meditate about what God has done for us and we seek His forgiveness. And, and that is true. It is for that. But communion not only looks within ourselves, it also looks outward. You see, communion to me is the great leveling field. When we come to communion, it doesn't matter who you are, how great your life is, how well you are walking with God. I don't care if you're living a sinless life, which I know you're not, but if you're close, that's great. I'm proud of you. But it doesn't matter if you're doing that or if you walked in here having cussed out your family in the car before you walked in the door this morning. When you come to communion, we're all looking for Jesus. We're all coming for the same thing. We all need the same thing. And he's the only one that makes a difference. So no matter where your life is at, when we come to communion, we're all in the same spot. 
We all need the same thing. We need his presence. And so as we share in this time of communion today, pray not only for yourself, but pray for the people sitting around you during this time of communion this morning. Pray for them and that God's spirit will fill them and that we as his family will be even more united. Would you pray with me? Father God, you are a tremendous and incredible, loving, holy God. Lord, it's so easy for us to get caught up in this world and the things of this world, to, to think that this is what we want, that this is what we're living for, that we miss the true place that our hearts should be set on. And Lord, I pray that our hearts will be set on your presence. And I pray this morning, Father, for each and every one of us in this room. I pray, Father, for my brothers and sisters in Christ today. For those who are struggling, Father, to understand your love, I pray that during this time of communion, the fullness of your love will just flow over, out to them. That as, as we pray for each other, your Holy Spirit will, will just flow from us and, and, and spill upon each and every person in this room that will experience your presence. Lord, we are not alone. Thank you for loving us and thank you for the value you place upon us. Thank you for the gift of your son and the sacrifice that he made for our sins. And, and thank you, Father, for your promised presence in our life. We love you. We praise you. It is in Jesus' name that we're able to pray these things and to, in his name that we seek to honor you. We want to continue this time of just worshiping God by offering a time of invitation this morning. If 
Perhaps there's somebody here who just needs a, a church family to be able to walk with in life, to, to lean upon as we make this journey to the presence of our God and that you can be a part of every week. And if you want to be a part of this church family, we would love to invite you to be a part of it. We're going to have an elder standing by the glass doors back there that you just you can talk to him about that. Or perhaps there's somebody here this morning who needs to make a decision and a commitment to Christ because they've never accepted the salvation that Jesus offered us and the sacrifice that he made for our sins. And, and you want to give your life to Christ for the very first time. And if that's where you're at this morning, then we want to welcome you and walk with you through life that you can experience the joy of what it is to have that kind of relationship. And again, that's why our elders will be back there by the glass door. Nobody walks alone. Uh, and we want to be able to be here to walk with you as we as we go through life. But one day we're going to walk into heaven, and when we get to do that, we're going to stand before the throne, and we're going to proclaim just how great and holy and mighty, and we will sing with the angels around God's throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So let's stand together and let's sing that to him this morning as we prepare for that day when we'll get to stand around his throne and just proclaim his great, great glory.
so much for this day that you've given us, for this beautiful sunshine, the nice breezes that we have. Lord, we take so much for granted. And Lord, I ask that you just be with everyone that's here today. Bless them, keep them, shine your light upon them. Lord, and for those people that couldn't be here today, for whatever reason they couldn't make it, Lord, I, I pray that you cover them in your healing, cover them in your power. And Lord, help us to be more like you. Help us to find that strength that we need to make it through our day. Give us that strength that we need to fight the good fight and to keep plugging on, Lord, because we know that you are there, you are supporting us, you are helping us every step of the way. Lord, I thank you so much for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask if you would have a seat for just one second. First, we are in the process of doing something kind of new. Um, and we're going to share with you guys this morning something that we would like for you to do to make, uh, hopefully, connections here within the church family a little bit easier and a little bit better. And so to do this, we thought we would just walk you through the process today. Because what basically, we have uh, been working, I shouldn't say we, Nicole has been working very, very hard, as I keep asking lots of questions and driving her crazy, about setting up a church app. Um, and because uh, we live in a digital age, how many people have a smartphone? Okay, I should have just asked how many people don't, because I know there's like three or four of you who don't. And so... Uh, before you leave today, if you will come see Nicole, because th this app is going to be how we're able to communicate with you guys uh, all the time. And so what we're, this app will allow us to be able to send out notifications. We'll no longer be sending text messages. Um, but this is also going to allow us to get all information about everything going on here at the church to you. Um, we, it is still an, in development, and so not everything is working the way we wanted to just yet. Today was the first day, though, that we actually streamed to our own personal website and into the app that we're getting ready to show you how to download. You'll be able to watch any past sermons, uh, message series, uh, and teachings that we record and upload. You'll find them there. There's a Bible uh, program within the app that actually connects our series and things we're doing here with the Bible passages. There's going to, and as I said, we're still, we're going to roll it out in stages, but this morning we'd like for you all to download this app. And so the process is real simple. We're going to go, if you go to your camera uh, and grab the little paper that was in your bulletin this morning, or you can try to scan the QR code that is up there on the uh, screen. And now here's the thing. You're actually going, don't take a picture of this, okay? I know sometimes people start taking pictures of it. You want to... The way it'll kind of light up right, well, I can't, can't hold it and do it, but, yeah, hold that for a second. Where's my camera at? There we go. So, once you, once you find that there, you should be able to touch on that, and then it will bring up, it didn't work for me. See, this, this is the beauty, it worked earlier. iPads are a little different. Have you all got, I know you are, uh, it's just not bringing up the, uh, is, it, is it the, it's not coming up for you either, okay, then go to your app store, or, and that's why we're doing this live, is because we tried to write down directions, um, but we sometimes find that things don't work exactly right. For me, the app store is that little symbol right there on an iPhone or an iPad, if you have a Google Play Store, uh, and you'll go to that. And what you're going to search for, if you have an, if you have an Android phone um, or Apple, once you get into it, you go is under search. I'm sorry? Is it available? No, it isn't. Yeah. Available on Google Play Store or on at the Apple App Store. You can do either one of them. And I want you to search for simply CCC space Springfield. If I can spell correctly. And then when you search for it, it's going to bring up, and we have the nice advertisement over here, what they're trying to get you to download. Don't pay attention to that one. The one that looks has our little logo on it and says CCC Springfield, that's the app that you want to download. Mine just says open because I've been through this several times. But yours will say get or install or something along that line. And when you do that, uh, it will open it up. Now, if 
Once you do that, mine popped up automatically here to allow notifications, and we do want to allow notifications. If it doesn't pop up with that, we'll get you to that step in just a second. I'm going to take about another three minutes of your time this morning uh, to walk you through just getting it downloaded here. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why I was, I was going to walk you through the steps that were in it. Um, so after you after you downloaded the app, you're going to open it. We're going to go have you go to the top right corner. This little looks like, kind of like a person inside a circle. That is your profile uh, location. And if you'll click on that, it's going to bring up something that should look like this. It says log in or sign up. <coughs> Give them a little time. If you'll click on the log in or sign up, it's going to bring up these choices. Now, if you, we're going to suggest you continue with email because some of you have Google accounts and iCloud accounts that you never check the email from, and we want you to actually be able to get emails from us. So continue, if you would, with email. Um, and it's going to take you in to this screen right here. And since this is your first time doing it, we're going to touch this create an account. And it's going to ask you for your name and phone name. Boy, that's hard to see. That says first name, last name, email. Put in your name, not my name. Not my name. Uh, but, and your email address, whatever it happens to be that you choose to use. And it's going to tell me that I already have an account. So and make sure that it's different email. Like if you're a husband and wife, you share an email, only one of you guys put that email in. It has to be unique email addresses. If you don't have an email, get one we, later we, and we download get you down one. Get you one later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, young, younger yeah. ones. That's what, if your children don't have email addresses, uh, you can put them in under your account, but they're going to get all of your information. Um, and when you start trying to communicate, that's going to, you don't necessarily want them seeing all the stuff you talk about. Um, <laughs> I'm just guessing. But anyway, uh, I can't do, I've got to go back into. Now, once you once you created it, you're going, it won't let me create an account because I already have one. So I'm going back and going to log in to mine. It should, at this point, uh, once you put that in, you're going to receive a notification to check your email. And if you can check your email, you'll have something to confirm the activation of your account. It'll say Subsplash. Subsplash. That's our platform that we're using. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll help you with that. We, we will not, you will not be getting text messages anymore after this week. So that's why we want everybody to get this out. Um, now, once you do, once you get that email and confirm it, it should bring you back into your profile page right there. Um, and what we're going to ask you to do is click on notifications. You'll have to maybe have to scroll down on your phone. But make sure you turn on. Up there at the top. At least general at the top, yeah. and later you can turn on all notifications for whatever groups you might join. Um, because I'm a member of everything, I've got all of them on there. Sorry, that gets a little confusing. You may not have all those options on yours. Questions, real quick? Yes, Mike? Uh, more? Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't yet, I've got a smartphone, but I have not yet figured out how to turn it off so that I can bring it into church with me. Okay. to the future of the church uh, and communication within the church that we want, we felt it was important for us to take just a couple minutes. Uh, I am running over by five minutes at this point. Um, but once you get back into the device, um, the, the continued uh, 
coins are there. If you would fill out, just uh, complete your profile. Um, that's the main thing that we'd like for you to do. And then we just encourage you to play around in the app a little bit. Um, you'll be able to see past sermons and things that are going on. You'll be able to find uh, some information in there now. We will be developing this over the coming weeks. And we will take another opportunity to walk through a couple of these things uh, as we've added features to the app. Um, we Basically, one of the great things that this is going to allow us to do is if you... We have a lot of people say, well, I, I don't know people's names. I see faces, but I don't know names. If you will put a face beside your name in the app, then other people will be able to see what your name is. And, and maybe we can start putting some faces with names, um, and it will help people. We, our, our plan is to get to where we can have a full uh, church directory, but we have to get names in there so that we can start setting up the church directory so that you can know who people are. Um, because I hear from people every week, I, I don't know I don't know half the people at church anymore. Um, and and you, we want you to be able to at least know who people are. Um, you'll be able to see lovely pictures of beautiful babies and things like that on there too. Uh, and we will be working with you on finishing some of this stuff out in the coming weeks. I, I'm not going to try to do it all this morning because it's way too much. Um, but uh, you will also be able to communicate with anybody from church by simply touching a message button and sending by name that person a message. You don't have to have everybody's phone number because it will do it through the app and you can message them individually. Um, and that way, hopefully, we will build better, stronger friendships and connections within the church. You'll also, within the app, you'll see the ability to simply do um, a prayer requests that you can share with us. Um, and that is very simple. It's already set up. And if you have a prayer request, I would encourage you to send it to us this week. Um, and then we will be setting up a group for people who will pray for you about those things. Um, and so there's, there's going to be a lot of good things. We're not going to go any further than that right there, though, today. Um, I'll probably be taking pictures during service, so don't be freaked out if I come take a picture. Because instead of having to stock photos on our website, so I want to be able to put our faces on our website and on our app. Okay, so you'll see me kind of walking around just taking pictures. So. But I know you probably have questions. Uh, Nicole will be happy to answer all of them. Sure. Uh, and, uh, but right now, I'm just going to ask you to stand with us. We're going to say a little prayer. We're going to sing a song. We're going to head out on a, on a big note. Uh, and we ask you all for grace as we get this set up. Uh, as we live in God's grace, it is uh, his grace is enough for everything that we're going to need to face in life. But I just uh, thank you for your patience this morning with that. And uh, hope you have a great week and that you live in the presence of God. Would you pray with me? Father God, you are a great and mighty God. We love you. We praise you. And we give you all the glory. Thank you for your grace, and Father, may we celebrate it today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.